Hi, this is Scott at Chief Architect. In the Dutch Cottage Design Project, we're going to look at designing a house with an intermediate understanding of Chief Architect. We're going to cover the outline you see on your screen, ranging from the floor plan, foundation options and framing, roof options. We're going to be doing a compound curve on a Dutch gable. Custom ceiling, we're going to stick frame and truss frame the roof. We'll put in the stairs section and detail place a terrain and a wraparound deck, and then we'll take a look at the kitchen, the cabinets, and then dimensioning our wall elevations. The final step will be placing and creating our construction documents through the layout. As I go into Chief Architect, you can see the completed design. And again, we're going to create that compound Dutch gable roof, our wraparound deck. As we go inside the house, we'll lay out the floor plan and our kitchen, and then in the foundation, I'm going to create a crawl space and a full basement. Look at options in our floor framing, including truss framing and regular joist framing. And then in the roof framing, we'll do a combination of roof trusses and stick framing. So let's get started. I'm going to begin the project by using an exterior wall tool and creating the shape or outline of the main floor. So I'm just going to come in here roughly and create the dimensions for the structure. Again, it's just a simple L-shaped structure. Once we've got that completed, I'm going to use my automatic dimension tool and place the dimensions. Once those dimensions are in place, I'm just going to work my way around. I'm going to select this wall, I'm going to pull it in, or I'm going to highlight the dimension, and I'm just going to enter in 40 feet. We'll do the same thing on this side. I want this to be 50 feet. Select this wall and enter in 20 feet. So just a little bit of busy work here. And finally on this wall, let's set that to be 30 feet. And we'll zoom out here just a little bit. Update our automatic dimensions. And now I have the basic dimensions that I want for the structure. I'm going to take this exterior wall and I'm just going to pull it through to provide structure for my garage. That's easier than using an interior wall tool. I'm going to notch it out so I can make that an interior wall. And I'm going to do the same thing with this wall. It just saves me a little bit of time so that I don't have to use the other wall tool and then align it. So again, I'll just click the break tool. I'm going to select this wall and this wall. Group select them. And I'm going to change those wall types to be interior six walls. And then on this wall in the center of the room, I'm actually going to make that an invisible wall to give me room structure. So just here on the general tab, we'll mark that as invisible. It shows up as a dashed line. Now using the interior wall tool, I'm going to just draw a couple more walls in here for a hallway and then a bedroom. Go ahead and update our automatic dimensions, and then we'll just square these up. Now the dimensions we just placed are actually going to the main layer of the wall. If I zoom in, you can see that this dimension line is going to the main layer, which is represented in the dark blue. You can see the different wall layers that make up the siding, the sheetrock, and in the materials list it's going to calculate for you. If you're a kitchen and bath designer, you may want to just toggle those layers off. Simply highlight the wall. You can get into the object layer properties and toggle those wall layers off simply by turning that off and then you only see two sets of lines. Now to dimension the interior, there is an interior dimension tool. You can use that tool and go from interior across here. And again, that's going to pick up the wall main layer. Let's turn those layers back on real quick. So those interior dimensions are going to the studs. If you're a kitchen and bath designer and you care about the surfaces, there's a couple of ways you can do it. You can simply highlight the dimension and pull it back, or you can change your dimension defaults, which are controlled in Chief Architect Premier through annotations. And if I have the NKBA, the National Kitchen and Bath Association, default on, that's going to now select just the interior surfaces. Let's just go through here and zoom in, and you can see that that's actually going through to the surface. If you're curious about what that is locating, you can open up your Dimension defaults, and on the Locate Objects panel, you can choose what it's going to locate. 
and you'll notice that in this NKBA defaults it has wall services selected and that's why it is picking up the services when we use that tool. In a 3D view you can see our design and each one of these rooms, I'm just going to select them, open them up. On the structure panel you can see in the diagram it has 109 and an eighth. That allows for a standard stud for a nine foot ceiling. And for this room I'm going to select it to be a garage and certain rooms have properties. When you make that change you'll notice that the flooring has updated and it will also allow us to build a particular foundation for that room. For this room we'll set it to be a kitchen and that may change the material depending on what our default profile plan has in it. In this case it did not and for this one we'll set that to be a bedroom and then also for the back room we'll also set that to be a bathroom for our master bath. You can also change the height of these rooms just simply by clicking and pulling them up but it's not as precise as using the dialog box. The next thing I want to do is I want to change the exterior wall type. I have just a lap siding wall. Inside the room dialog on the wall types you'll find a pony wall option. You can choose from a drop down list. In this case I'm going to use brick and I'm going to set the lower half or lower elevation of that wall to be 36 inches. And then I'll go ahead and make the rest of the walls the same exact type. Next let's move on and place the openings beginning with the windows. On the back wall here I'm just going to click and place our window, move it around, and when you open this window up let's make a few changes. On the general panel let's change it to be a double casement window and on the width let's set that to be 48 by 54 and we'll add some lights in here. I like to use a craftsman style light. We'll just set that to be maybe three, let's see what this looks like, three by four. And we'll select OK. And now let's do one more thing. In Chief Architect X8 on a flat wall, if you bump this window up, it's actually going to bump the header up. Now let's check what our header is on this. Underneath the framing panel here, it's using the default header. So when you build your framing, whatever that opening distance is, in this case we had a 48 inch window, your header is going to be, in this case, a two by eight, so seven and a quarter inches. So that's going to bump that header against the top of the wall. Once the window changes have been made, I'm actually going to now use the tool called Set as Default in the lower section of your menu. Now future windows, when we place those, will have those same attributes when we come over here and place one in the front. And again, maybe I'll uh, match the interior dark color on the front of that window. And then we'll set that as our default window. So going forward, they'll all match that. Next, I'll choose the door tool and I'll place an exterior door back here. I'm also going to place one before I make changes in between the garage and the main living area. On the door in the back here, let's make a few changes to that. What I want to do is set the type of door here to a glass door and then we'll make some changes on the height. We'll set that to be 96 and on the lights we'll somewhat match what we did on the windows here. Let's go ahead choose that to be a craftsman and we'll set the uh, number to get that update and then we'll close that. Let's go ahead and use our material eyedropper, pick up the color off of the window and we'll apply that to the door. And we'll set that as our default. And we'll place one more door in the front of the house. And then we'll resize it to be a little bit wider. Simply open this up and we'll see if we can get it. No, not quite. So we'll just open it up and set the dimension to 60 inches. And perhaps we'll just slide that over here a little bit. And we'll just kind of rotate around, place the rest of our doors and windows. Again, using the window tool, we'll just place a couple of the windows over here. And then using the interior door tool, we'll place a couple of doors. And then finally, let's rotate around and let's place our garage door. And let's see if we can just stretch this side to side. I like the color already. And in the dialog, we'll just set that width to be 17 feet by 96. 
and then we'll use the center tool and if we can get on the uh, center of the outside of that room that'll center it exactly in that space. Now to position those openings I'm going to re-update the automatic exterior dimensions once those are placed. Let's zoom in and you can click on these objects just like we move the windows in place. Slide these into a position. Let's just set this at 8.6 and you can make your way around and set those dimensions exactly where you want. Let's go ahead and set this also to be 8 foot 6 and then I'll clean up the rest of these dimensions. But that's how you uh, get your exterior dimensions placed. So I've made my way around and updated the rest of those dimensions back into the 3D view. You can see our finished project and what we have done is placed our walls, named our rooms, which has given it room definition, in some cases different materials, changed our exterior wall type, placed our doors and windows, set the default for those, and then we also checked our ceiling height. Now the last step in creating the main floor plan is to build our framing. Under the build menu, you'll find the framing for the walls. And I'm going to go ahead and select automatic build wall framing. And we'll turn that view on. Let's go back in and there's a specific camera to view just framing. Let's go ahead and open that. You can see how it built the automatic framing. We rotate around here and we take a look. Let's use Shift F6 and split our screen. When you move one of these items, the automatic framing will also update. So as I move this window back and forth, you can see that the framing has automatically updated. Also, if you move the window down in the wall, let's go ahead and open this up. And we'll set the floor to bottom. Let's go ahead and set it to be uh, 18 inches. It will relocate that in the wall. Well, that finishes up this section of the video. We've created the main floor plan. We dimensioned our walls. We did some interior dimension. We placed the openings for the doors and windows. Also dimensioned those, set the defaults for those, and accurately positioned them. And we also verified that our wall framing was as we expected to be. In the next video segment, we'll take a look at our foundation and foundation options.